Anyway, uh, went to the Peace Corps office, and um, when we walked in, the Peace Corps director was there, and he said, when are you all planning to leave? And we said, Tuesday. And he said, here, sign this. He said, don't ask about it, just sign it. So we signed. And it was a list of people that wanted to go to the Northern Islands and the Marianas, which we've wanted to do ever since we've been out here. But they're very difficult to get to. And the radio was out on one of the islands, so they, the Peace Corps was chartering a boat. And we were able to go up on the boat. And then the boat left that afternoon at uh, 2 o'clock, and we went down, and the Peace Corps director was there with his children, and the Peace Corps director for Micronesia was there with his children, and the doctor and his children, and volunteers, and about 30 people in all. And uh, the boat's called the Hafa Day, which means uh, hello and tomorrow. Um, it had bunks down below, but we all slept, most everybody slept up on deck. It was the rockiest boat I've ever been on. It just rocked back and forth. Almost everybody was seasick. I was seasick a little bit. Greg wasn't seasick at all. The food was fantastic. We had turkey, which we just don't eat out here, and chicken and pork chops and all sorts of good things. The crew was really nice and very, very helpful, and uh, we had apples and oranges, and uh, it, was, it was really nice. The boat we went up on is a, is a new boat. Well, it's not a new ship. It's new out here. It's an old uh, World War II submarine net tender, which has been in mothballs for about 22 years, and the Department of Interior has it on loan to the Trust Territory. So uh, it was its first uh, voyage since it sailed out here from San Francisco. We left uh, in the afternoon, as I said, and we got up to Pagan at about uh, 6.30 or so in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning. The island has two volcanoes on it, one of which has a hot springs inside. I guess you can go swimming and everything. We didn't have time to get up there. Uh, it has two or many beautiful black coral beaches, black sand beaches, um, just beautiful beaches. The island has about uh, 43 people on it, I think, and they're divided into two factions, and the volunteer up there, this one volunteer, has been having quite a hard time uh, keeping in the middle and working there. I guess they really work against each other and stuff. They had giant coconut crabs. I've never seen anything like it, bigger than two cats, really big, and all sorts of vegetables and stuff, which they were trying to trade for coffee and sugar and cigarettes and stuff. Of course, there are no stores or anything there. And uh, uh, But we hadn't brought much stuff with us to trade. Not too many people had brought stuff. And it was a problem of only one family had anything to trade. And if everything was traded with that one family, then the other families wouldn't have anything. And they'd really have them over a barrel to get, you know, rice and stuff. But anyway, we were there for a while. The doctor did a slight operation, and they fixed the radio and stuff. Uh, Pagan does have flights. Uh, this pilot here, who uh, we know quite well, Emmett Kay, uh, flies up to Pagan. They have a small airstrip, which was built by the Japanese for a fighter base during World War II. But Agrigan, the, uh, the other northern island, does not have uh, any facilities whatsoever. Uh, for air transportation, let alone for ship transportation. Uh, they, there's no real harbor at all. The waves just come rolling in, and when it's rough, it's just about impossible to get in. Uh, we had a small boat that left the ship to go in, and we almost got swamped a couple times getting into the beach and over the waves. Then we went on up to Agrigan, which we got to uh, later that afternoon. It was just a, a couple hours, about three hours to go up there. And there are two volunteers there, a couple, married couple. The fellow's in agriculture, and she's a nurse, and they both teach school. Greg, how many children are, how many people are on a Gregan? Thirty-six people on a Gregan? And forty-three on Pagan? Forty-six on Pagan. Well, anyway, a Gregan didn't have any kind of harbor at all. Pagan had a nice harbor. And a Gregan was just one island just going up like a like a mountain whereas Pagan it had lots of little kind of mountains um 
and the village was just in one little part, and evidently people didn't really go anyplace else on the island. It was too difficult to get there. It had no harbor. The little boat almost sank when we were trying to get in and off, out off the big boat. Priests came with us to both islands to say mass and stuff. Um, I really liked Agrigan a little more than Pagan. They don't, they're Carolinian there, and they don't speak Chamorro. They speak Carolinian. Um, pretty little island. They had had very few field trips and such. They had a boat uh, that stayed for 30 minutes with some congressional committee just uh, a couple months ago, and then the last field trip was in December, I guess. It didn't stay too long. We, we, we didn't stay there too long, which was too bad. People had prepared a feast and such, but it was getting dark, and they were anxious to uh, go back. So anyway, we really are happy that we were able to uh, see these islands and get to them, and uh, we feel really fortunate. We went back and stopped at Pagan to pick up the people that we had left there. And then uh, and it was nighttime, and that took a while. And then we uh, went on back to Saipan. We arrived back in Saipan Monday afternoon, and everyone was pretty well set to get off the boat, I think. Um, some people were never going to go on a boat again. This one rocks so much. Um, then... We ran around doing the last little things that we had to do on Saipan. And then Tuesday morning, we, we came back to Rota. So we really had quite a eventful trip, which we didn't really expect at all.